Oh my goodness, the shed is such a mess and uh, these are worrying me, sat up here on top of all this junk. So uh, yeah, I definitely need to get these mounted to the wall. So in a previous video about these packs, I got to the point where I'd fused um, each cell and connected it to my bus bars and uh, that seemed to work quite well and uh, I did the same on the negative side and a few people commented yes I am fusing both on the positive and the negative sides I'm a belt and braces type of person but the next bit has been fairly crude putting these uh, crimp connectors on well uh, basically I've uh, lined up the uh, two cells here against something straight and level and then I've tried to uh, crimp these on in the same manner and of course these will get um, screwed and, and bolted should I say together um, for a good connection and then hopefully the whole pack will line up quite nicely but uh, well we'll see about that so I still need to do a few of these crimps that one hasn't actually been crimped yet and of course uh, the next one in the in the chain and that sort of thing so I'll get on and I'll crimp some of these connectors so one of the first things I need to do is cut the uh, copper bus bar to about the right length. I've been using these cutters, these cut through the copper quite happily. So uh, let's just get that through there and I uh, think about there is about the right length. And now I'll find a crimp. Now with those two wires cut to uh, about the right length, um, it's a matter of squeezing on this crimp connector now i've gone for this was sold as an 8 awg crimp connector and uh, it's difficult to get on it's quite a squeeze which is probably a good thing really isn't it now i've untwisted the uh, 2.5 mil cores a little bit and i line up these two um, packs for example and then hopefully i can make them meet and that will crimp and make a good connection but ah i've forgotten the heat shrink on these haven't i i guess i don't really need to use heat shrink because i don't intend to heat it and shrink it at this point but perhaps i will one day but yeah they're roughly in the same place that will do so now with big crimp connectors well you need a big crimper and a big crimper well, doesn't require too much force, actually. That's not too bad, and that seems pretty solid. Now I am being a bit slapdash with my measurements here, aren't I? And that might bite me in the bum later. Perhaps I should have created some sort of jig, but uh, I now need to work out how long this one is going to be. And this is the uh, pack number one. This is the most negative point. Um, so I guess I'll swap these two around, measure it up to this one, and hopefully when I mount it all, well, hopefully it'll all work out. So there we have at least, well, some of the packs, my bench isn't really big enough for all seven. Um, and I think these are all going to marry up reasonably nicely. We'll uh, find out, I guess, when I attach it to the wall. So at the end of the shed opposite the door, there's this piece of wood that I mounted a few years ago. I'm not sure why. Um, but uh, it's become a shelf. There's some empty boxes, some jump leads, an old radio, and hanging off it, my first ever solar panel little 10 watt monocrystalline solar panel so uh, i'll clear up this area now and uh, well look at mounting the blocks so there we have it a one meter piece of din rail uh, attached to the wall of the shed on that piece of wood and that should hold all my packs it was a bit tricky to both film and put that up so uh, you just seen the finished article now, I realise it might not be very easy to see what I'm doing here on the wall. So, uh, I've got a small piece of DIN rail here and uh, my 3D printed bracket. So, the idea is the 3D printed bracket will slide onto the DIN rail and that should slide on quite nicely. And then, uh, well, we just get a pack, clip it in at the top, click, and uh, it's held in place on the DIN rail. And, uh, yeah, that seems to work quite nicely doesn't it so uh, that's pack one in a bracket and sorted apart from the fact that it's not on a wall but while we are talking about pack one 
I have done a full discharge of this pack um, from 4.2 volts or a fraction under claimed here um, all the way down to uh, 2.9 volts and uh, you can see a typical discharge curve here um, but there is a slight blip here which I'm not entirely sure I can explain but uh, Anyway, the uh, voltage dropped and then it tailed off at 3.7 volts here. So that's a, a nice discharge curve. I would have expected perhaps this 3.7 volts to be held for a bit longer before it dropped off fairly quickly. But as you can see here, it's showing a capacity of 47.48 amp hours. Well, 47.5 amp hours. And that's 178 watt hours in this one block and actually if you uh, times that by seven because i'll have seven of these blocks all attached well that's 1.246 kilowatt hours so uh, yeah i've built a pack that's definitely one kilowatt hour and there are the seven brackets hopefully with a bit of fiddling not easy while filming they slide along yeah reasonably nicely so there we have all seven packs now connected together with bolts and wing nuts now i'm not expecting these to carry any current really because all the lugs are sort of face to face and clamped down to each other so those uh, tinned copper lugs should hopefully carry all the current and uh, with my multimeter now connected to the uh, most negative point down here let's uh, test the voltage is 4.17 and then 8.35 that's looking pretty good 12.5 uh, um, oops hands in the way 16.6 20.8 25 on the dot almost and we're up at the top 29.2 volts so they seem to be happily connected together with all seven packs um, now attached to the shed wall the shed is a bit tidier and i can move forward with this project i just need to uh, hook up the bms and get all that working easier said than done and i need to work out how to get some solar into these 18650s and possibly uh, how I'm going to use the energy within here in the shed. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.